everyone. It's Miss Mary from Skokie Public Library, and I am back with another Rise and Shine story time. And today, I would like to get right to our magic box because it seems to be making a kind of a funny noise. Now, as you know, we have a red magic box in Rise and Shine story time, and whatever's in the box is what we will be reading about today. And today, take a listen to this and see if this noise can help you figure out what is in our magic box today. <laughs> what do you think that is? Kind of sounds like someone's moving around trying to get comfortable or taking a nap, something like that. What do you think? Shall we see? Okay. Oh. Um, look who is in the magic box today. It's a bear. And this bear is sound asleep. <laughs> now, actually, this isn't the only bear that's sound asleep at this time of year. We're in early November, and bears who live in cold climates always find a nice, cozy place to sleep around this time of year, and they sleep through the winter. It's pretty interesting, and that's what our bear here is doing. <laughs> this is called hibernation, and certain animals who live in cold climates um, can't get enough food during the winter, and they can't find it because of all the snow that's on the ground, so they go to sleep and sleep the winter away. And that's what this bear is doing. Other animals that hibernate, you might be surprised to know, are your friendly neighborhood chipmunk, who digs a hole in the ground and goes to sleep for a few months, wakes up when the spring comes and there's more food, and also groundhogs go to sleep for the winter in a nice den somewhere. And we celebrate when the groundhog comes out in early February on Groundhog Day. And bats also sleep the winter away, usually in a big group of bats together in a cave. And bears find a cozy place called, we call it a den. It's either a cave or a, they'll dig a hole in the ground and get all cozy or uh, the inside a hollow tree, maybe. And it can be a pretty small space because the bear curls up and goes to sleep. And then in the spring, when there's more food around, bears wake up and spend the summer outside. So let's read a little bit about hibernation today. I'm gonna put our friend the bear down. Now wake him up. And here is our book for today. It's called, Bear Has a Story to Tell. It's by Philip Stead, illustrated by his wife, Erin Stead. And I am reading it today with the permission of Roaring Brook Press. Bear Has a Story to Tell. Here's Bear. It was almost winter and Bear was getting sleepy. But first, Bear had a story to tell. Mouse, would you like to hear a story? Asked Bear with a yawn. 
I am sorry, Bear, said Mouse, but it is almost winter and I have many seeds to gather. Mouse was too busy to sit and listen to a story. Bear helped Mouse find seeds on the forest floor. When they had finished, Mouse said, see you soon, and tunneled underground to wait for spring. Bear took slow, sleepy steps through the forest. Fallen leaves crunched under his feet. Hello, duck, said Bear, sitting down to rest his tired legs. Would you like to hear a story? I am sorry, Bear, said duck, but it is almost winter and I am getting ready to fly south. I will miss you, duck, said Bear. He raised a paw to check the direction of the wind. I will miss you too, said duck, and off he flew. The sun was heavy and hung low in the sky. Bear's eyelids were getting heavy too. He counted colors to stay awake. Three pink clouds. Let's count them. One, two, three. Two red leaves. You see them? One, two, and one green. Frog! Hello, said Bear. Would you like to hear a story? I am sorry, Bear, said Frog, but it is almost winter and I have to find a warm place to sleep. Bear dug a frog-sized hole between two evergreens. Then he tucked Frog in under a blanket of leaves and pine needles. Thank you, Bear, said Frog. I will see you in the spring. Bear leaned against the old oak tree. He stretched and yawned and scratched at his belly. I wonder if Mole is awake, he thought. Let's find out if Mole is awake. Oh, we have to turn our book around, look. Mole, are you there? Mole, there's Bear at the top and look who's down in the ground in a hole. Mole was already asleep. Good night, Mole, Bear said with a sigh. The first winter snowflakes began to fall. And look, there's Bear hibernating in his den. Many months passed and the sun returned. It melted the snow and woke the trees. Bear rolled out onto the green grass. It's spring, he said. Now I can tell my story. But first, Bear brought Mouse an acorn. Thank you, Bear, said Mouse. Mouse was hungry after a long winter. Welcome home, Doc, called Bear. You must be tired from your journey. Bear showed Duck a shady mud puddle he'd found.
bear placed Frog in the sunshine until he was warm and awake. Frog opened one eye and then the other. Good morning, said Bear. Bear, Mouse, and Frog, and Duck, waited all day for Mole to wake up. Finally, Mole poked his nose out in the moonlight. Mole, said Bear, would you like to hear a story? Bear gathered all his friends. He sat up straight and cleared his throat. He puffed out his chest, and with all of his friends listening, <laughs> Bear could not remember his story. It was such a good story, he said, hanging his head. But winter is a very long time for a bear to remember. The friends sat together for a quiet moment. Then Mouse said, Maybe your story is about a bear. And Duck said, Maybe your story is about the busy time just before winter. I think there should be other characters too, suggested Frog. Like a mole, said Mole, and a mouse, and a duck, and a frog. Bear sat up straight again. He cleared his throat, puffed out his chest, and began his story with... It was almost winter, and Bear was getting sleepy. <laughs> so different kinds of animals have different ways of dealing with winter. You notice that mouse dug a little hole in the ground, and frogs do hibernate. Frog was going to go deep down in the mud and sleep all winter long until it was warm enough for him to come back. And Duck decided to get out of the cold weather and fly south, come back when the weather was a little bit warmer. So I think the way animals deal with winter is so interesting, you know. They don't have a nice warm house like us, so they have to find other ways to get through the cold weather. Now, if you like books about hibernation, we have a lot of wonderful books about hibernation at Skokie Public Library. Old Bear by Kevin Henkes is about a hibernating bear that has a wonderful dream that the warm weather has come back and it's spring. And then when he wakes up, he has a big surprise. Time to Sleep by Denise Fleming is about a bear who says good night to all his friends before he goes to hibernate. And The Very Long Sleep by Polly Noakes is a funny story about a fox who shares a winter home with Bear and Chipmunk and Marmot and has a big surprise when his three roommates all go to sleep for months and he's left all alone. Foxes do not hibernate. Good Morning Granny Rose by Warren Ludwig is one of my favorite stories about hibernation. It's an old folk tale and it's about an old woman and her dog who get caught in a cave during a spring blizzard when they're out for a walk. And pretty soon they discover that they're not alone in the cave. Can you guess who's in the cave with them? Winter Sleep by Sean Taylor and Alex Morse is about a grandma and a grandson who explore the winter woods and discuss hibernation. And there's wonderful information about hibernation in this book. And Bear Snores On by Karma Wilson is a great rhyming story about a bear who is sleeping in his cave while all his friends who don't hibernate are having a party. So check out some of those books at Skokie Public Library.
And now before I go, and I just want to check on our bear here. Yeah, still sound asleep. I'd like to teach you a funny song about a bear who's hibernating, and this is one that you can use to scare your grown-ups a little bit if you want to. It goes like this. Like this. Grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear is sleeping in his cave. Grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear is sleeping in his cave. Please be very quiet. Please be very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, bear gets very mad. Rawr. <laughs> you can surprise your grown-up with that growl at the end. Want to sing it one more time? Let's, let's do it one more time. Okay, here we go. Grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear is sleeping in his cave. Grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear is sleeping in his cave. Please be very quiet. Please be very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, Bear gets very mad. Roar. <laughs> well, I'm going to be very quiet so that our friend the bear stays asleep. And I will see you soon, and we will do more stories together. <laughs>